fluctuating fortunes of the good boy or girl, ever protected in the hour of crisis from the evil machinations of the scheming witch, the cruel giant, or the wicked king. And our little hearts never faltered for the fate of the hero or heroine, nor do we doubt their ultimate triumph over all their enemies, for we knew that the fairies were infallible, and that they would never deserve those who had consecrated themselves to the good and the true. And what unspeakable joy pulsated within us when the fairy queen, bringing all her magic to bear at the critical moment, scattered all the darkness and trouble, and granted them the complete satisfaction of all their hopes, and they were, happily ever after. With the accumulating years and an ever-increasing intimacy with the so-called realities of life, our beautiful fairy world became obliterated, and its wonderful inhabitants were relegated in the archives of memory to the shadowy and unreal. And we thought we were wise and strong in thus leaving forever the land of childish dreams, that as we re-become little children in the wondrous world of wisdom, we shall return again to the inspiring dreams of childhood and find that they are, after all, realities. The fairy folk, so small and nearly always invisible, yet possessed of an all-conquering and magical power, who bestow upon the good, health, wealth and happiness, along with all the gifts of nature in lavish profusion, start again into reality and become immortalized in the soul realm of him who, by growth in wisdom, has entered into a knowledge of the power of thought and the laws which govern the inner world of being. To him the fairies live again as thought people, thought messengers, thought powers working in harmony with the 